Hey, it's Zach, and I'm back with another episode of Elevate and Accelerate. In this episode, we are rounding out our series around the business trifecta of media, marketing, and PR. And so today, we are going to be focusing specifically on PR. Uh, we've, in previous episodes, gone over media and the accelerators around that that you can see here of credibility, content, and connection. We've also done the same for marketing with leads, opportunities, and sales. And so today, in PR, we're going to talk about validation reputation and community. We're going to focus on what PR is and why it matters to you and your business and how it's different uh, from these other uh, channels of media and marketing. But as you can see from this diagram, they do overlap. And so there will be some overlap in this conversation today. But uh, one of the things that I want to talk about before we get any further is really dispelling this idea of what PR is and what PR isn't. In my research and studies and conversations with people over the years, I found that most people can't really define what PR is, uh, at least the people that I'm working with and talking to. And as a result, there's a lot of preconceived notions about what PR should be, what it is, what it could be, what it, and on all everything in between, right? And so I want to show you here um, on in doing my research what I came across and and why I think this is uh, often a obstacle or uh, if anything a stumbling block for a lot of people who are looking for media opportunities and what they're doing to help grow their business. So first and foremost. One of the things that I've run into a lot is this idea that PR is earned media while advertising is paid media. In other words, advertising is what you pay for and PR is what you pray for. Now, I'm calling this a myth. Now, the reason why I'm calling this a myth is because I really don't think that there's a, uh, a distinct line between what PR is being earned media and advertising being paid media. In my research and, and looking at a lot of these things, some of the largest organizations out there um, and even in, in experience that I've seen with companies like ESPN, for example, they have a PR department and a marketing department. Right. They're very distinct from each other, whereas marketing and advertising is is really concerned and focusing on short term goals like product promotion and uh, and the selling of, of goods or the services or whatever it might be for for ESPN. It's, you know, whatever's happening in that moment, whether it's an event or some sort of, um, you know, uh, TV show or whatever it might be. PR campaigns, on the other hand, seek to achieve more long-term goals, um, delivering valuable brand information, um, building that sustainable brand image and promoting the stakeholder loyalty, right? There's some of these buzzwords that came out in an article that I read on Investopedia, but the idea behind all of it is that, you know, PR being a separate department within the company, right? Within the company is key here. So the, some of the biggest differences between what advertising and PR is, is really between, is, is what the objective is uh, within the organization. So you would look at large companies like Coca-Cola or ESPN or some of these big companies that, that we compare to, they have a PR department and they've got a marketing department and their strategic goals are very different from each other, which is why they're separated. Advertising and, and marketing really focuses on those short-term goals of sales and product promotion, whereas PR focuses more on the image. It's a long-term goals of building a valuable brand uh, image to the public, right? Which brings me to the next part and, and what's going to be important in sort of bringing all this together is what even is the definition of public relations in the first place? If you were to Google it, you're going to find a lot of different uh, definitions of what PR actually is. And I think one of the, the simplest ones and the easiest ones that I've been able to find actually comes from the Public Relations Society of America. And they say this, Public relations is a strategic commun communication process that builds mutually beneficial relationships between organizations and their publics. Quite simply, public relations is strategic communication that builds mutually beneficial relationships between organizations and their publics, right? Now, what a lot of people uh, assume when they come into this conversation and, and many of the conversations that I've had is that public relations is this earned media idea. If I'm paying for media, if I am, if I have to put out dollars in order to get media placements, then I'm doing something that's disingenuine, uh, disingenuous. It is not, uh, it's not okay. Right. Uh, but PR at its core, again, is just strategic communication that results in mutually beneficial relationships. So that's what we're talking about here. So you've really only got to ask yourself this question. Uh, do you truly believe that you have what it takes to help your clients achieve their goals? And if you do, is what you're charging equal to the value that you're giving? 
And if it is, or if it's less or whatever it is, well, then you're building a mutually beneficial relationship. How are you letting them know? How are you communicating to your public in a way that's going to build that mutually beneficial relationship, right? Because at its core, that's what PR is. And if you go back and look at it, in fact, PR was really started and used to manipulate, specifically manipulate public opinion around something, right? Um, there's, uh, there's Ivy Lee, right? Um, one of the first, uh, public relations people, uh, to be credited with this type of approach, uh, did the very thing for John D Rockefeller. He was hired, right? Paid by the richest man in the world at the time, John D Rockefeller to help change Rockefeller's public image from a vilified orange baron, uh, oil baron to a well-loved philanthropist. And it worked. Right. Uh, there's so many different stories of people who used public relations to manipulate public opinion about a particular product. Right. Um, and so what I want to get you back to is as a small to medium business owner, how do you incorporate this idea of public relations into your branding and into your business? Now, one of the biggest distinctions that I found that I think is really helpful in understanding what exactly is going on here is what a lot of people are talking about uh, in, in this earned media idea is that they do something really good. Local media channels find out about it. Then they want to cover this person or this organization because of the impact that they're having either in the community or in individuals or whatever it might be. That's the earned type of media, right? That's publicity. And so there's a difference between PR, public relations, which is a relationship to your public and publicity, which is that earned media, right? And so public relations in and of itself is very, very different uh, than what we're talking about when it comes to publicity, which would be like a viral post, for example. Um, now, does it mean that the only type of social media that you should be doing is viral posting that other people are going to share? Uh, no, not at all, because it's a way for you to communicate with your audience and it's a strategic platform for you to have strategic communications with them. And that's really at its core what PR is all about. Now, as you build your brand and as you are seen and, and are delivering as an expert in your field, local media channels and some of these other things will catch wind of that and, and bring you on as an expert. It's happened to many of our clients or quote you in the articles and different things like that. So, um, so there is an earned aspect of this uh, that can play into it. But anyway, getting back to the topic at hand and what we talk about specifically here at Celebrity Branding Agency and what I teach on with PR is that it's a whole lot more than just this. So right now, when we're talking about public relations and that's a feature in, in local news channels or or maybe you get quoted in a in a magazine article or something along those lines um, is really third party validation right now if you remember our model here we had talked about uh, number one of PR the first accelerator being validation um, and what I like to talk about when I talk about validation is while you have been using a media and you've been using media and your marketing to be able to get your voice out there, to show people that you know what you're talking about um, and that you understand and have empathy for what they're going through because of your own story and why you're passionate about helping people and doing what you do. Uh, you can show up authentically in that way. Validation is, is helping you to be authenticated. Right. So you can be authentic without being authenticated. Uh, and that's what uh, the first step of PR is really all about. Right. It's giving you that stamp of approval from third party sources. Uh, and again, if you look back at the model here, that's that idea of moving from self promoting where media and marketing together without PR is really just you telling your people about who you are. Right. But when you add in this aspect of that third party validation, it's the next step of uh, of moving from a place of being self-promoted to being celebrated by your audience and that being shared with others as well. So um, so validation. Right. That's the that's the next step of this. And we've seen it before in media. And when we talked about it, the as seen on and as featured in. Right. And we've got people like, you know, Tony Robbins and Jack Canfield and Brian Tracy and Grant Cardone who are using that type of validation in their marketing and advertising as well. But another part of validation that we're talking about here goes a step further and it's your clients. Right. Um, and it's client stories, which is a distinction that I like to make is very different than, let's say, a testimonial 
where a testimonial would go something along the lines of, uh, you know, I met Zach and, uh, he was really professional. Um, he delivered on everything that he said he was going to, and, uh, and it was really great working with him and anybody else that would want to work with him. I highly recommend it, right? That's a testimonial. A story would be something very different. A story actually has the character and the tension and then the resolution. Right. And so it would go something along the lines of before I met Zach, uh, I wasn't sure how to take my business to the next level. And I was stuck in this grind and I knew I had a story that I wanted to share, but I wasn't sure how. Then after finding Zach and Celebrity Branding Agency, I've been able to share my story on all these exciting media channels and platforms. And now, uh, you know, I'm seen as that go to authority in my field and I'm helping more people uh, and I'm living the life that I wanted to as my business grows and opportunities are opening and, and so on and so forth. Right. And so there's the resolution on the other side. That's a full story arc. Um, this is on JJ Virgin's website where she's actually sharing the stories of all of these different people that she's been working with and who she's helped. Another part of this is honors and affiliations, right? There's other ways to validate what you're doing outside of just media, right? Uh, it's awards, right? It's recognition from, uh, from third party. Right. So uh, this is from a client of ours, Jennifer Perry, um, and a number of awards that she's gotten over the years and uh, recognitions that she's received for her work as a as a coach and financial advisor. Right. Uh, and so, again, all of these things are just um, are just validating the fact that you are who you say you are uh, and and are corroborating your story, essentially. Right. So you've got radio and television that can do that as well. Um, you've got other uh, celebrity partnerships. Right. So uh, Coach Pete is a is a client of ours. And um, as and as you can see here, he's also a Dave Ramsey smart vester pro. Now, whether or not you agree with Dave Ramsey's philosophy here, when you if you do and you land on this page, you're going to see, oh, wow, uh, there's some validation here because this person aligns with my values as well, which we'll get into in a minute. But this person, um, you know, uh, is is partnered with somebody like Dave Ramsey. And and I like what Dave Ramsey has to say. And so I like what Coach Pete has to say. And so I'm going to look him up and, and want to do business with him. So there's another level of endorsement here that you can get uh, and validation that's outside that uh, local trade journals or, um, or uh, 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 what are they called? Industry specific magazines, right? Um, getting features on those or other validations that you can share, right? And here's a couple from, uh, from Craig Lack that um, is a client of ours. And then finally, we have press releases. And again, these are internal communications um, that go out to your public, right? And so you can put out press releases written in the third person um, that that tell the story of whatever's happening in your business. Um, and so those press releases are third party validation, but ones that you can write. Uh, this came up one time, uh, we did a, uh, Nick was the director and producer and, and our abundant studios and everybody did, uh, the Dickie V film, which was, uh, bought by ESPN and is now streaming on ESPN plus and Disney plus, right? When ESPN first purchased that, uh, they wrote up a whole bunch of press releases that they then sent out on their own. Right. But they wrote it in the third person. ESPN does this new new documentary from ESPN films in collaboration with. Right. And they wrote all of that content, but then sent it out. And then the news channels and different stations picked it up um, and it looked like a story outside of, of that. But it was an internal communication that they sent out to their public. Right. And so you can do that same thing. Right. We can take what the strategies of these larger corporations and what they're doing and find ways that we can do it without the same level of budget and team in order to execute it. So there's a lot of options and opportunities out there, but you can send out press releases, too. Um, OK, cool. Um, validation, um, you know, can come from a lot of different places like that. And if you really are successful in building your brand and taking it to the next level, um, uh, things start picking up on it, right? As you get picked up by a lot of these different uh, magazine articles and online sites and all these different things, um, Google will actually create a knowledge panel for you, right? Like we didn't go in and create this for Nick Nanton, for example, who's the CEO and co-founder of Celebrity Branding Agency. Um, but here you can see because of, of what he's been able to build in his brand, doing the very things that I'm teaching you right now, uh, he's been able to, to to leverage his brand into the next step, uh, which could look like something like this and a knowledge panel, which, you know, when you Google a lot of, um, you know, well-known people, that's what they have. All right. So that's what validation is. It's all of these different things that are corroborating your story and backing up what you're saying.
Next on this list is reputation. And this may or may not be what a lot of people talk about. But when I talk about reputation, when it comes to PR, I'm talking specifically about your values. How do your values show up in your business? Uh, what is it that you, what are your core values as an organization and as a company? And how do you communicate those core values to your audience? Uh, there's a quote here from, uh, from Elvis Presley that I absolutely love. And I'll get out of the way so you can see it. Uh, but he says, values are like fingerprints. Nobody's are the same, but you leave them all over everything you do. Uh, and there's so much truth to that, right? Because uh, it's how we make decisions. Our values are the filter in which we do everything that we do. And if we haven't articulated our values, if we don't even know what our values are, then a lot of times we end up being very reactive instead of proactive. We don't have a lot of intention in what we're doing. Um, and it comes to your business as well, right? Um, there's probably a set of core values that you have and how you make de uh, decisions um, right now. And maybe you've never written them out, but what you've noticed and what you probably run into a lot of times then is, is uh, the way in which you would deliver results to your clients. For example, if you hire a new team member, they have a different a set of values. And if you haven't articulated what your values are, they're going to handle that client or those operational systems very differently than you did, right? Because it's going to be aligned with their values and they're going to make decisions based on their values. And so what ends up happening is you've got a team of people all with different values, bringing in different ways in which they're making decisions about your business, right? And if you've got a very, if you've got a large team, you can see that happening very quickly. If you aren't, um, if you don't have the whole, whole company aligned on what your values are. Patrick Lencioni uh, does a great job of talking about what these different types of values are. And so I'll just give you a quick summary uh, of those things. So uh, he talks about there being core values, aspirational values, permission to play values, and accidental values. Okay. So the core values are, uh, are, these are values that guide all of your actions, right? These are the ones that we were just talking about. And they're the values that truly make you an individual, right? This is what sets you apart. And what you're willing to say is going to set your business apart. Um, aspirational values are really the values that you wish you had, right? Um, they're, they're values that you're working towards, but they're not actually in place. So if you've got a bunch of people that show up late um, all the time, and you're saying that one of your core values is punctuality, well, then that's not really a core value. That's an aspirational value that you're going to hold people accountable to, but it's not yet a core value because people aren't following it, right? It's a hope to. The permission to play values are self-explanatory, right? These are values that, um, that, that, you're not going to be willing to let slide um, as the situations arise, no matter what. So for example, uh, a permission to play value would be, you know, you can't steal money out of the cash register, right? Like that's just, that's just a given. If you steal, you're going to get fired, right? So that wouldn't really be a core value that you would uh, articulate to your, um, to your team. It would just be an understanding just to get hired in the first place. Um, and probably something that you cover in that, you know, initial stages of, of hiring and, uh, and onboarding, right? These are the things that you do and don't do. Accidental values are probably the most challenging ones. And these are the ones that if you don't have core values that are clearly articulated to your team, um, are going to, are going to arise, right? These are the values that are determined by the people that you're working with. Um, and, and they're ones that are being, um, grown out of the values of the people that you have hired. And they're not necessarily ones that you're cultivating or even recognizing as an organization. Right. Um, and so there may be, uh, there may be a team who deals with customer service, for example, and you may have a value of the customer is always right. Um, and your manager over top of your customer service team may have the value of, you know, the customer isn't always right. <laughs> right. So they're, again, they're just opposed to each other right there. Um, and so how that manager is going to train your team and how they they handle customer service situations may be different than, than how you would do that. Right. Um, but without articulating that core value, then, uh, then that's an accidental value that gets worked in where managers bring in their own values that may not be aligned with your core values or with the organization's core values. Um, and then it be, it gets trained into, uh, into the team. Same thing's true if you have a toxic manager, right? 
uh, where maybe they don't have a, a value of, uh, of back channeling and dissension and, and undermining and all that kind of stuff. But if that's how they act and that's how they, um, and that's what they bring into the environment, um, then the people that they hire and the people that they train are going to be into that environment and either they like it, um, and they become a part of it or they don't. And they end up leaving and you leave good talent that way you lose good talent that way too. So having your values and sharing your values is extremely important. Um, now I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but um, this last part that I want to share you about these values is, is why it's so important is that it actually impacts your bottom line, right? So this was a study done by Accenture strategy, um, some time ago, I've, I've been using it for a couple of years now, so I'm not sure the date on it, but it still applies in that they did a, t a study over a 12 year period, um, of comparing these organizations. And as you can see from the results that I have up on your screen here, um, is that the peop the brands with a high sense of purpose who really articulated uh, their values to their audience and what they were doing and why they were doing it increased in value by 175%, which is nearly double than the comparable median growth rate, right? So other businesses who, who weren't really... Um, known to have a high sense of purpose. They weren't seen that way by their audience, uh, did not grow as quickly and as much over that 12 year period. Now, as I get myself out of the way here, you can see that more than half of people um, are, are looking, consumers specifically, are looking for goods and services from companies that reflect their personal values and beliefs, as you can see in the top left here, that, that believe that they are um, sharing their, their authentic selves, um, that they're being transparent about you know, who they are and why they do what they do and where they're sourcing their products from, right? 74%, the largest number here, they really care about that transparency. So how do you do that as a as a small to medium business owner providing a service, right? It's you, right? That's your brand. It's not your product is you um, and what you have to offer and your knowledge and your wisdom. And so the transparency that you bring and the vulnerability and the empathy and all of those things are what are going to attract your ideal clients to you and ultimately impact your bottom line like you just saw right? Your growth rate is going to increase just by sharing your core values and living by your core values and letting people know that they exist. Um, final example here, um, as we move into the, uh, into the last of the accelerators and close out this episode, um, is, um, as an example of somebody that I want to share with you, right? Um, I'm probably going to butcher her name, but Marie Forleo, um, she, uh, on her website, uh, has her core values um, front and center, right? This is how we roll. And then she goes through all of her different values that she has for her organization. We believe everything is figure outable, which was based on our New York Times bestselling book. Uh, we change lives for a living. We're decidedly not for everybody, right? So she's, <laughs> she's doing that takeaway of, you know, this may not be for you. Um, we have a zero tolerance for hate. And finally, we believe in you. Right. So her five core values are clearly shown right on her website. And what I can tell you is that at the events that she holds where she speaks or where she invites her clients or anything like that, her team knows that they are going to filter through every decision that they make through those values. Right. Um, is this is what how we're currently conducting ourselves, showing that we believe in you? Uh, are we showing that we have zero tolerance for hate in this um, in this moment? Uh, are we are we? saying that we have, uh, we're decidedly not for everybody or are we taking on everyone, right? Um, and so all of the th these core values as a filter for her business also help her team to make good decisions about the type of people that they work with, how they serve those people um, and what they're looking for. And she, as a result, has been able to build an amazing community of like-minded people. Same thing with Jack Canfield and others like that, which brings me to the third and final part of this PR and the accelerators, which is the community. So this is a quote from Thomas Paine. Um, I literally just Googled uh, what's a quote about community or unity or being together. And this was one that popped up. Um, and it's not in numbers, but in unity that our greatest strength lies. Um, and I was like, wow, that sounds really cool. And so I used it, but I took some time to kind of dig in a little bit deeper on who this guy, Thomas Paine really was. Um, and so that quote was referring to the revolution, um, you know, and uh, was pre-revolutionary war. Um, and in fact, was even writing against uh, the African slave trade 
back in the late 1700s. Um, and so he wrote a paper called Common Sense, which was the framework for the Declaration of Independence uh, and so on and so forth, right? And so when he was talking about there's, it's not in our numbers, but in our unity that our greatest strength lies, um, he really had some, um, some awesome and interesting perspective on that. But this is the idea behind what you're building and what you're doing. Right. A lot of time we focus on uh, how do we get more people into our fold? How do we attract more people? How do I, you know, how do I ca cast this really wide net and get as many people in here as I can? Um, when in reality, you're you're actually just looking for a specific group of people, um, people that you can serve. And that is your community. Right. But your community extends beyond that. The community is the people that you surround yourself with as well. Are you part of coaching programs? Are you part of a mastermind group? Um, you know, are you the smartest person in every room that you go into, right? Who's challenging you? Who's helping you be the best version of yourself? And that's your community as well. Um, but the community that you can create uh, is, is a community for your clients, for your prospects, right? And there's so many different ways in which you can do that. Um, and your community is what gives you that, um, that inspired voice, right? That's what people are, are looking for a lot of times, right? We, uh, we talked about this when we went through the business trifecta, these three results, right? Where you can see these circles overlap. Um, these outcomes are what happens when you're executing well. And one of those, you could see the three people kind of all connected there is that when you incorporate PR into your media and other things, you get an inspired audience, right? These are people that may or may not actually be your client, but are sharing your story and what you do with other people too. My wife is a great example of this, and I like to use her as an example, but uh, she was digesting so much of uh, Joe Dispenza's information at the time, listening to his podcast. I'm pretty sure she did get a book, but, um, you know, reading through that and, and just kind of listening to what he had to share when he was um, uh, on these different programs and, and content uh, channels and things like that, and then was sharing his information with other people. Right. And telling others like, oh, man, you should check out Joe Dispenza. And he talks about this and he talks about that. And this is really helpful. And it's really so like she's out there sharing his story and his information with others, even though she's not technically a client of his. Right. And then the people that she shared that with went out and bought his stuff. Right. Um, and and purchased a program or, or bought a book or whatever it was, and they became clients. And so, you know, if, if Joe Dispenza or his marketing team was looking at that information, he would really have very little idea of where that person came from. Right. So maybe they, maybe they Googled him and then pulled up his website and then went to his website. And so from those metrics, it looks like they just happened to Google Joe Dispenza, not having any idea that the reason why they Googled him in the first place was because my wife was advocating for him uh, at that time. Right. And that's where your brand really starts to precede you. Um, it's also where it becomes very difficult to measure because there's really no way to measure the impact that my wife sharing Joe's information with other people has has increased his business even in that little bit, right? And how many times has that happened over and over again? And so your community is really an important part of all of this and how you develop it and how you reach out to that community. And again, that goes back to the media and the marketing, the content, the information, the sharing, the valuable wisdom, so on and so forth. But it can also look like creating a, a Facebook group right? You can create a Facebook group for people that's free. It doesn't cost them anything, but they're interested in what you have to say and you share that information. And so, and so you, you create a group of, of clients and maybe prospects or, or like-minded people who are just interested in seeing what's going on. Uh, your community could also be your actual community. Who are the people that you support as an organization within your community and neighbors and friends and family members, uh, that show that you're giving back to, uh, to, to your community at large and the people who are making an impact in your communities like nonprofits and things of that nature veterans organizations, right? And how you share that is important too, right? Just saying all the time, oh yeah, I do this and I do that, you know, it, it would look like self-promotion and is self-promotion, but sharing pictures uh, on your social media, putting those pictures on your website. I mean, there's a reason why they say pictures say a thousand words. And so this is a great opportunity to be able to do that. Uh, and like I said, you can create a Facebook group, you can create a members only group um, where if you, uh, if you have people who purchase products from you and services from you, uh, like that was JJ virgins doing weight loss and fitness, um, you know, that really lends itself to having a, a wider audience of people who are also on the same journey. Uh, so maybe creating a, a community of people who are on the journey with you that you're helping guide them through, uh, is a great way to be able to create continuity, um, to make it more sticky, to provide more value, uh, and all of those things as well. So 
Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, that'll that'll kind of close us out here. But uh, just in summary, if you can see that public relations uh, is a whole lot more than just uh, media placement, right? It's more than just publicity. Uh, it's how you communicate to your audience in a way that creates a mutually beneficial relationship. Uh, but it's also your core values. Um, it's what you stand for as a brand and how your reputation ap reputation then precedes you. Um, and, and what people can stand on that you've got integrity. And if you don't know what your core values are, definitely look into that. What is it that you make decisions on? What are the things that annoy you when people don't do it? Um, what are the things that you celebrate when people do do it? And you could probably start figuring out what your values are um, and then start articulating that. Put it on your website. Share that with the clients in your, in your sales call or in prospects in your sales call of what your values are and make sure that you're training and teaching your team those things as well. And then finally, how are you building and cultivating a community? Not only for the people that you're working with or want to be working with, uh, but for yourself as well. Um, how are you being challenged and, and what are you doing to, to grow and build uh, yourself uh, as a person and as a business owner and entrepreneur? Uh, and that's it. That's all I got for you. So as always, hopefully you found this valuable and helpful. Uh, if you did, please like, share, subscribe, so on and so forth. Uh, and I appreciate you joining me today and taking time out of your busy schedule to listen to what I have to say. Uh, and uh, until next time, keep elevating and accelerating. Thanks. Thanks.